This is News Desk. Thanks for staying with us. Carlos Ahinkra, Member of Parliament for Tema West, has released a statement apologizing for snatching some ballot papers during the election for Speaker of Parliament in the House on Thursday morning. The statement reads, My party, the NPP, of course, enjoys a slim majority in Parliament. Courtesy see the independent candidate from Formina. By this arithmetic, the NPP was supposed to occupy the right side of the speaker in the chamber. When we got to parliament, the opposition had occupied our seats. We tried to convince and work things out with them, but they declined. I was almost assaulting the marshals of parliament. We conceded because of the inauguration ahead of us and sat in their space. Then the clerk of parliament announced that the injuncted Asin North MP could not vote by virtue of a, of a court order served on him. After a long heated debate, the NDC still won't yield. Leadership went into conclave and returned with one of the most unfavorable agreements ever, that a clause in the constitution forbids anyone who isn't qualified to vote in parliament to vote. If the injuncted MP Lex decides to vote, he suffers the consequences afterwards himself. How ridiculous. What if his vote changes the outcome of the elections before he goes to court? Then we got to voting, and the minority claimed they wouldn't allow any whipping. In other words, uh, no one can show their vote to their whips after voting. Really? Then what's the whip system for? Why then do we have whips? Since the beginning of the Fourth Republic, elections have always been controlled by whips to ensure the members vote on a particular line. It happens everywhere in this world. Asking us not to be whipped sent us all wondering. The MPP did not comply. The clerk ruled that voting could commence after a little back and forth as the first few MPP members voted. The NDC whip in the person of Muntaka attacked an MPP member and collected his ballot paper from him because he shown it to someone else. A scuffle ensued and he took the ballot box himself and the ballots inside away. After a long wait, balloting commenced, recommenced. This time, the same Muntaka took the ballot box and ran off that someone was showing their ballots while John Jinapo and Sam George kicked the box and the voting booth. This act happened three times, so leadership had to go into conclave once more. Upon their return, they asked us not to show our votes anymore. I immediately sensed danger, especially when during voting, we noticed many skirmishes where some opposition members would cross over into the MPP voting booth to vote there, etc. Looking at the slim margin between us, NPP and NDC, all the NDC had to do was to lure or convince a couple of members of the MPP and carry the day. So I indicated to leadership the dangers in that ruling. After voting and true to my words, the NPP votes counted 136 instead of 138 numbers we had. I wouldn't accept that. The irregularities accompanying the voting from the start were too many which had compromised the voting so much so that I wanted to create a situation for a rerun. Just as my colleague from the other side took the ballot box away on three occasions, I also grabbed a few ballot papers before they could be counted so as to force a rerun. It's a very tough situation to have opposition as speaker, especially when he's the president in the absence of Nanado and his vice, not to mention how parliament would, be, would function by passing the president's policies and laws to pave way for development. My colleagues on the majority side could not help take advantage of my sacrifices to force a rerun and would settle for an opposition speaker. I must say, I am heartbroken and dejected. We've not seen the end of this yet. With this success, they will tell us what they want and what they don't in Parliament because the whip system has been compromised. This is so sad. I'll die for my party any day. I did this for the grassroots who relied on us in part to survive the president who needs some peace to run the country, and the greater NPP party as a whole, because we cannot always allow the NDC to threaten and vilify us. I apologize though to my family and friends, both far and near, who may be affected by my actions. The NPP in me could not be controlled. I apologize, but I tried. So that's Carlos Ahinkra in a very interestingly worded statement. Uh, now, of course, we have spoken to um, his officials who work for him, and they confirm that he authored that statement where he apologizes to his friends and family, but he says he tried. Um, and he explains that the NPP in him was too much. He did it to try and force a rerun. I don't know what your views are about that.